So while the glue is setting up, I'm thinking about what colors to paint these windows and doors. The uh, nice folks at DPM have provided what is a representative color here on the little picture of what it could look like. And keep in mind we're making background buildings so we're going to do the front half and the back half as separate buildings to be used against a backdrop or somewhere as a view block. Anywhere you can't see the back. Now here in the drawer uh, next to my workspace is the paint. And uh, I put little stickers on the tops of the bottles so I can tell what paint it is without having to take it out, look at it, and put it back because it was not the color I was looking for. I think we're going to make this one a red brick garage. And to that end we're going to use Poly S Boxcar Red. This is my favorite brick paint and because it's uh, water-based and not mineral-based it goes on a little thick but that's okay it smooths out and makes a nice finish so that's for the brick and for the windows we're going to use hmm, Floquil Roof Brown this is a mineral-based paint and it uh, works great for things like windows After a series of disastrous paint spills here, I've developed the hold the bottle down firmly and stir it. I use a small screwdriver over and over and over and over and over again. It needs to be mixed well, never shake of course, only stir. And yes, I could spray this, I could use my paint sprayer, but the uh, amount of prep time and cleanup time is huge so I prefer not. Reaching back here for a paper towel to wipe this off and we're off and running. Now we need a brush and for the purposes of this window and door painting I'm going to use this. A relatively firm brush that is uh, kind of flat and this just takes a little time to paint these windows and of course you gotta make sure you get down inside the window as well now this is not one of the more delicate kits made by design preservation in fact this is uh... well it's not a beginner kit but it's closer to beginner than it is to uh, a craftsman kit and it's easy to tell that because the, these windows are not quite to scale. In fact, they're not even close to scale. They're, they're quite big by comparison with how a real window might appear. But uh, these things turn out pretty well. I like them. And uh, other folks who have purchased these on eBay from me seem to like them as well. So I guess it's in the mind of the beholder. We've painted the windows, we painted the doors, and now we're going to set this aside. But first we're going to cut out these sort of rolling up doors because, as you see in the uh, way the folks at DPM made this, the door is closed. But to give a little character to our building, we're going to have the door be open. And we'll start that process by modifying the doors themselves. So we're going to take the opportunity here of removing the doors from this sheet. Here we go. These are the two doors, one from the front, one from the back. And because we want them to seem like they're open and not closed as they are right now, we're going to do a little surgery on here using a, uh, an exacto knife and the ruler or straight edge we're gonna cut down this seam right there and cut down this seam right there and then cut across to create the impression that the door is rolled up somewhere and is open okay so there's our garage door opening for one side and we'll take uh, files and sandpaper and take it down so that it's nice and smooth on the inside. So we've created here a doorway. 
with the door up. I'm just smoothing the inside of the legs of this and the top. Now to paint the doors, I'm going to use a silver paint to make them look like they're metal, which they are. And that's old silver, another floquil mineral-based paint. Okay, here's our old silver. It's all mixed up. I'm going to take the, remember the empty bag in which this project came? That's there. And I'm going to use one of these things. A gripper that is springed, spring loaded and uh, holds things very tight to hold this while I paint it. A small brush and we're underway. Now one of the things you'll notice with paints like this is that they don't work well with the glue. So there'll be some touch-ups that'll be needed when this is glued in place uh, because some of the paint will uh, dissolve when it's hit with the glue. I tend to keep the paints that I'm using right here. That way I know exactly what colors I've used so far. And uh, when I go to sell these models, uh, I include a list of the paints that I've used with the, uh, with the items so that uh, a person could do uh, some touch-ups in the future. Okay, these are pretty dry. and hanging together just fine. Okay, we're going to paint these now. And we're going to use our boxcar red. Well, on at least one of them. We probably won't paint them both the same. And it's always amazed me that sometimes when I only want a very little bit of paint, there's as much as I need clinging to the paint stirrer, but it's not easy to use as a brush, so that's that. And for this, I'm going to take a somewhat larger version of the one that I used to paint the windows. It's uh, flat but it has an angle. So this being the front, I'm going to do this with the caboose red paint. And I'm just applying it as evenly as I can. I'm particularly careful about seams where walls are glued together. So we're coming down to the home stretch here on the paint job on the front of this building. So for the second half of our building I'm going to paint it in rust. Now you may think well that's an odd color to choose but rust looks pretty good on brick or as brick so we'll open up the old floquil rust give it a stir and start on the back with rust I think it's important to note that the floquil mineral based paints on a large area. This is not large, but it's more than just a small area. Tend to get blotchy. So you don't want to try to stretch the paint too thin because when it dries it will look like it hasn't been 
properly painted. So there are the front and the back of our garage and we're just going to let them sit for a while. The paint needs to dry thoroughly.